Hello world, this is Nick the Wayback Tech. I am recording this directly to my Sony VAIO PCV200 desktop computer from 1997. I have my JVC HD camera hooked up through composite. Let me show you that right now. And here's the cord. Going right to the hard drive. That is a vial. And there we are. Nice little mirrored image going on there. And we are running, uh, recording at about uh, 27 frames a second. 32240, and I believe it's 256K color, which is actually doing pretty good. Uh, you can see the, uh, in the mirror image there, you can see the blue compared to the blue on the monitor, and it's, you know, it's pretty close. Pretty good for 256K color. They did a pretty good job um, getting that. To, well, at least the palette says 256K color, which I'm guessing it probably is, so. Um, this is recording in raw AVI format, and there goes my white balance, folks. Yes, there it goes. I have just lost my white balance, so everything is orange now. Although it's a lot oranger on my preview than it is on the computer here, so I guess that's maybe a good thing for 256K color. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is better in a webcam. Uh, well, maybe it would be better in a webcam. I don't know. Um, so this is a 16-year-old computer running pretty good. Um, I upgraded the memory in it and um, I don't know, I think it's doing pretty good. You know, if you had a handy cam back in the day and plug this up, you could have a lot of fun with it. Um, which is probably the intent, you know, you buy a Sony handy cam, of course, you know you're going to buy a, a Sony VAIO desktop to record your, your home videos on, you know. And email to your friends. I think that's the intent of this computer. And you know, that's something that you don't have these days. You know, you don't have, I don't know, something about computers nowadays, it, the stuff that you buy at the store just doesn't seem neat anymore. You know, I mean, this thing had preloaded movie trailers and, and, and preloaded video editing and, and, and stuff like that. It's got, you know, composite, you know, granted, it doesn't have Firewire, you know, and that comes later, but, you know, for, for the era, it was actually, you know, they were trying to get a lot of, you know, trying to make this a pretty, you know, multimedia capable computer when, you know, back then, you know, having a USB port was considered multimedia, you know. And that's why they cost more, you know, these things were two grand, twenty two hundred, twenty five hundred sometimes, you know. So uh, let me uh, show you guys real quick here. I'll do another video here. I'm going to pause this and then we're going to show you a uh, replay. Um, while I'm playing and recording at the same time. Show you the raw power of the Pentium 2 processor. Oh my god, there's two of me on the screen! Not too bad for a, what, 16-year-old computer? I could have some fun with this, I, I think. Um, this could be kind of interesting to play with. Definitely not going to be capturing HD video on this thing, but probably cost about... 2100, 2200 probably back then. I guess if you were capable of, of, of hooking up a camcorder to this thing, you might have been pretty impressed with this. Definitely, if I do any kind of serious uh, recording, even just for fun, um, I'm definitely going to have to put a bigger hard drive in it. It's recording in raw AVI format. These videos I've done so far are about 360 megabytes a piece. So here's how you go about watching TV on your computer back in the late 90s. You had a tuner capture card. That's your Asymmetrix DVP video editing software, which sucks. TV tuner. Now I just have an antenna hooked up to this and I can only pick up one channel. in a row with this flotilla of three floats linked together like wooden pull toys. The on the roll again float depicts Lewis the Duck and his family. Turn that down so you can go to full screen. Hide your menu bar. 
And there you go. I'm starring on NBC's hot new sitcom, Sean Saves the World. Here's Megan, Megan Hilty singing Merry Christmas, Darling. Or I could switch to video input, which I don't have anything hooked up right now, or S video. Or you could just type with your keypad. So I want to do that 0, 05. Channel 10. And I can also record this. One frame dropped, but that's okay. So, so here's a recording I just did here. Open that up. Time now to give a hearty howdy to Macy's Sandland Express and this holiday hoedown of cowboy Christmas clowns. So, so you could do some pretty neat things with this, even back in 1997. Uh, you know, there was a lot of... This was... This was a pretty cool thing to be able to do back then. So let me show you the video editing. Now, I have to admit, I have absolutely no clue how to work this. And I had the same problem back in the day. Because I think I had this exact same software. It's basically extremely limited. So I did this one last night. Took some video of my metal cars I have on display in my living room and I can drag it there and I can do some filters and stuff like this but unfortunately let's just say like I'll do a fade to black let's see here go up and I want a preview so here's the video I captured last night. And I'm just previewing it so it's kind of slow. But as you go throughout the video, it slowly fades to black at the end. Now the problem with that is I don't really want it to start fading to black about halfway through the video. I want to be able to uh, slice off a portion of the video at the end and then just you know have the fade at that very that that very end of that video I can't seem to do that with this software so it looks to me like the, I believe the way I used to do this was I would actually record a small uh, portion of video you know a few seconds at a time and then piece it all together so like I could take uh, it's just and these are frames these are not seconds there it is. Okay, so I'm going to add another video. So I'm going to do the no name that I just recorded off the TV. There it is there. I'm going to put that over here at the end. And let's just, for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and say uh, build. I want to go to my desktop so I know where it's at. Let's go ahead and compress it. Uh, let's see, uh, test. So now we're building the video frame by frame. So yeah, this was a time-consuming process right here. Uh, definitely nothing like what we have today. Okay, so our build is finished. Let's go take a look and see what uh, we've got here. Okay, so there's my file. It is a little jerky because it's having a hard time reading it off the hard drive here. 
hard drive is not fast enough. Even though I've defragged it many times before doing this video. I should have uh, turned up the uh, brightness on the composite when I was uh, recording this video to the computer, but uh, I didn't. And then there's that pit bit that I added uh, at the end of it. If you had enough hard drive space, this would have been um, more convenient to record TV off the inter or off the uh, cable than um, a VCR would have been. Okay, so we're done with that. So, okay, well let's see how big that file was. And remember, this is uncompressed AVI. 212 megabytes. I think that's about roughly a minute and a half of video, two minutes of video close to that. So, yeah, it definitely took a lot of hard drive space if you wanted to, you know, put together a 30 minute video or something like that. You definitely had to be really careful about how you did it. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this. A uh, little bit of a. Uh, this is how you did video editing back then, you know. This is how you recorded yourself to the computer. And I can't imagine trying to email this to someone over a 33.6 modem. I don't see um, anything to recompress this into MPEG. So thank you everyone for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing all my videos.